Uh, my name is Vlastimil Babka. I work in Prague for SUSE Labs on the memory management topics. And yeah, uh, this is kind of my favorite topic uh, in the uh, memory management for the past several years now when I'm not uh, working on meltdown and specter backports and stuff like that. Uh, so <clears throat> some of you might be might have been yesterday on the session promoting huge page usages. So this uh, session kind of complements it with enabling huge page usages. Uh, I will explain what we do in the kernel to make the huge pages available. Why is it not easy? What are the open issues? and uh, possible solutions to those open issues. So I'll start with how uh, physical memory pages are allocated in the Linux kernel. Uh, at first level, we have NUMA nodes. Then those could be divided to several zones or just a single zone. And each zone has uh, something called binary body allocator, which is managing all, almost all pages except some uh, special ones, and uh, gives them out in response to alloc pages calls, and, and then frees them in response to free pages calls. And uh, internally, it manages uh, the pages in a way that that when it's possible, larger pages are coalesced together from smaller pages, so they can be immediately available uh, up to four megabyte size. So if we didn't care, uh, what we could have is just a free list that would uh, link together the individual base pages of four kilobyte. But because we do care, in, in fact, we have multiple free lists. The free list in, with index zero is, has a linked list of order zero pages. Just the four kilobyte free list one has uh, double the size. Free list two has, again, double the size and so on. And because alignment also matters, these, uh, these two pages are contiguous, but not aligned to eight kilobytes. So they remain uh, as order zero for kilobyte pages. And uh, yeah, the, the reason we do this is that if we need a larger page, we can immediately go to the proper sized list and get it instantly. Uh, no searching in bitmaps or whatever. Uh, and of course, uh, it's not so easy because sometimes uh, the high order pages won't, won't appear on the lists because the free memory is fragmented between lots of smaller pages. So in this case, we have nine pages free, but no order three page, which would be eight pages, uh, 16 kilobyte, I think, cannot be allocated, uh, even though there's more free memory. Uh, why do actually need this so-called high order allocation, which means more than the four kilobyte order zero? Yeah, we had the discussion about huge pages yesterday. Uh, user space wants uh, huge pages, transparent huge pages, or huge TLBFS. Uh, in the case of x86, uh, the huge page size is two megabytes, which is order nine in this scheme. One gigabyte would be order 18, but the maximum we support is uh, order 10, so these gigantic uh, huge pages have to be allocated with something similar to CMA, 
which was already a topic here, and I won't go into detail about that, but uh, CMA is similar to compaction as, and has many of the problems I will uh, explain later as well. Uh, huge pages are one thing, then we might need uh, like physically contiguous areas of memory in the kernel for other reasons because hardware that doesn't su support scattergator needs physically allocus, uh, contiguous areas to work. Uh, sometimes there are uh, uh, discussions about increasing the page cache base size to, for example, 64 kilobytes because the new drives would benefit from that more and that would be another case of larger order allocation. Sometimes we just care about the, the pages, uh, the memory being virtually contiguous, not physically contiguous, but it's simpler to just uh, allocate large physically uh, contiguous page because that implies it's also virtually contiguous in the direct mapping. Uh, that the kernel uses and uh, examples where the kernel stacks until they have been recently converted to VM alloc. Uh, slab, uh, especially the slab with the U, likes to uh, use larger pages for performance reasons because the overhead of allocation is, uh, is spread over more objects and that improves the performance. But if it cannot get uh, the large pages, it will fall back to smaller ones, which is generally advisable. We cannot still guarantee uh, all the uh, allocators in the kernel that they will always be available uh, or able to uh, get a high order page. <coughs> Uh, and yeah, for the if we, if we only want uh, the virtually contiguous memory, the alternative is to use VM alloc, like the kernel stacks already started to do, uh, which uh, also isn't for free. That's why we don't use it everywhere because VM alloc means that. Uh, special reserved uh, virtual area has to be populated with page tables in a way so that it looks virtually contiguous but is made of uh, separate base pages. So that's some overhead in there. And we also lose the performance of the direct mapping which, which uh, internally uh, will use uh, huge uh, kind of huge pages itself like only fewer levels of page tables and with VM alloc we are down to all the five page levels uh, these days. So it's somewhat discouraged uh, just to use it and forget about the issue. Uh, it's better if, if you are able to avoid needing uh, large contiguous area of memory at all. But if you need it, uh, we also now have a new KVM alloc helper that will first try the higher order allocation and if it fails, it falls down uh, to the VM alloc and does all the GFP flux, flex magic for you so you don't have get spurious warnings and so on. <coughs> yeah, this is an example of what happens if uh, a driver uh, is not able to deal with a failed high order allocation. So that was Chrome browser trying to do order for allocation. And uh, yeah, we, we could see that there's plenty of free memory, like uh, 100 of, or 250 megabytes, but we could not allocate, I think, 64 kilobytes because of the fragmentation. And in the list, we also see that 
uh, on the lists of the orders for 64 kilobyte and more, there would be only one or zero available pages. And uh, there's also some kind of watermark protection that cannot allow the process to actually deplete them. So even if there's one, uh, it could not be allocated. And the result was that uh, the Radeon driver wasn't happy. And I think either the Chrome or, or the whole X crashed uh, in, as the result of this. So, so that's, uh, uh, that's something uh, we don't like. <laughs> Uh. So uh, here, uh, so page allocated does uh, like it changes behavior on the order three less. Is there any uh, like logical reason behind that, or it's just historical? So it, it was order four. Yeah, order four is like the costly order. Yeah, that's the costly order. If it is less than uh, three. If it's less than three, uh, than four, then we actually guarantee that there will be no failure <laughs> except some special cases. So that's not a real guarantee. But in practice, uh, yeah, the, the authors of the code won't notice that they don't have a good fallback until the special conditions happen. and. <laughs> They get a null pointer. So is there any uh, like a reasoning behind the order three, or it's uh, just, a just a historical okay. thing? Like this is small enough, so if you free the memory, it will always you will be always lucky, and some of the pages will appear there. Or if you continue reclaiming more, they will appear sooner or later. And it's hard to change it once once uh, it becomes a historical thing. There have been sessions at LSFMM multiple <laughs> ones about uh, these non-failing allocations. And yeah, the, the result is that it's too late to change it. <laughs> so what can we do to, uh, uh, to have higher chance of these higher order allocations succeeding. Uh, we can, the problem, as I said, was that the free memory becomes fragmented between large area that, that's not contiguously free. Uh, so we could try to avoid it, uh, which the body allocator, in fact, does to some extent, because when you ask for a small page, uh, it, and it has the small page available, it will give you the small page. And if it has only larger pages, like after the boot, it will split the smallest av available one, so it doesn't fragment more than it's needed. Which is enough until uh, the memory becomes full, which, however, is something we want, because unused memory is wasted memory, so so for m most workloads, uh, most workloads, you eventually end up with uh, memory filled with page cache or slab caches, and and then uh, the body allocator design cannot help this anymore on its own. Um, and when the memory becomes full, we reclaim it, which is uh, for the page cache based on. LRU algorithm, so we reclaim the pages that were not used by the processes for a long time, which, uh, does, which means that f uh, from the point of the layout in the memory, we reclaim like random, this page, this page, because the age of usage doesn't typically correspond to where they are located, so we end up with free pages from all over uh, the memory. At some point, uh, something called Lumpy Reclaim existed that uh, really said, I'm reclaiming from this to there, and that's a free uh, contiguous area. But because it uh, went against the idea of the aging by 
uh, least recent usage, uh, it was uh, discarded in favor for the next thing, which is uh, uh, memory compaction. So the idea is that uh, we have these scattered free pages everywhere and we migrate uh, other pages around to uh, make contiguous uh, free areas. So how memory compaction work uh, is, I think, best seen on an example. So we have two page scanners which go through the, through the array of struct pages, basically, that represent the individual physical pages. Uh, yeah, PFN means, means page frame number, so that's like the physical number of the page. And one scanner uh, starts looking, uh, starts at the beginning of the zone, and other scanner starts at the end of the zone. And the free, uh, the migrate, migration scanner looks for pages to, to migrate. And uh, the first page you see is a free page, so it doesn't care about that. There's nothing to migrate. Then it finds an occupied page, which belongs, for example, to the page cache, so it can isolate it from the LRU list, on the private list, and then it will yeah, isolate also these two and skip the remaining three pages. Then it may encounter a page that cannot be isolated because it be belongs to a slab, for example, so it can only skip it. Uh, then it isolates a fourth page, which in, let's say in this case that's the maximum. So it switches to the free scanner, which uh, finds this, this block of four uh, free pages in this case and isolates them. And because we have four to migrate and four free pages to migrate to, we can do the migration so yeah, the data that was in this page is copied to this page, and all the page tables of the processes that we're using it are updated. And yeah, so now we have four pages here, contiguous, and when we migrate the rest, we now have uh, eight pages, so that's more than than the four that was here in the beginning, so that's kind of uh, success. And we continue with the migration scanner, isolate these two pages, but soon run into the free scanner, which means uh, we know that we could not get any more free pages to migrate to, because the free scanner already went through this part and that's when the uh, compaction terminates. So that's uh, one reason where it can terminate. Uh, another reason is if we called comp compaction uh, for an allocation that wanted these eight free, free pages contiguous, then we would have already stopped after creating it and the allocation would succeed or it can uh, terminate for different reasons like uh, log contention on the zone LRU and zone logs, uh, fatal signal pending and so on. Uh, so yeah, that's the main mechanism in the kernel for uh, helping the high order allocation. Uh, of course, it has some uh, limitation. As, as, I've seen in, as I've shown in the example, one of the pages could not be isolated because it belonged to a slab allocator. So in general, only a subset of the allocated pages can be isolated and migrated like this. Uh, which is mostly the user space pages because there we have the full control of who can access them 
at any point of time. So if we rewrite the, the page tables of the processes, uh, we can prevent the accesses and that uh, means we can move the pages around. For kernel pages in general, it's uh, not as easy because anyone can have some pointer to an object from slab and we don't know how many of them there are. Uh, there are some classes of uh, pages, even in the kernel, that support this because they are special enough that they don't give out pointers to them to anybody. And that means uh, we can recognize them by having some kind of page movable, uh, not really a page flag, but something similar. Uh, I think this was introduced by Min Chen Kim. I'm not sure if he's here today. And uh, yeah, currently it's for uh, ZSwap compressed uh, swap uh, functionality that can uh, move pages like this. And uh, the yeah, virtualization memory balloon from Virtio can also do that because the balloon pages are there just to, just to create a memory pressure and uh, nobody really uses them for anything. So yeah, the pages that can be migrated have to be uh, kind of special like that. Also, if there's any page reference to, for example, the user space page, except from the page tables that are mapping them, because um, I don't know, the page might be under IO or whatever, then, then we cannot uh, isolate them at that moment. Uh, for, and for example, some file systems only allow their pages to be migrated if they are clean, not dirty, which is another limitation. And uh, in the end, the result is that if we want to allocate a huge page, which is order nine, which is 512 pages, it takes just a single one in there that cannot be migrated and we lose and even if we migrate all the rest it doesn't help. So, uh, what about the uh, vmalloc? Are they migratable or VMLoc, they can be? No, not now, but I think that's be. one of the candidates that could be looked at. I, I will mention them later actually. Uh, so, uh, yeah, one page uh, to prevent uh, huge page allocation sounds bad, so what we can do about that, uh, we can try to keep such pages as close together as possible so they don't spread out all over the memory, which is exactly the point of the second mechanism that complements uh, memory compaction and that's called page grouping by mobility, uh, which uh, works like uh, by logically dividing uh, the zone into page blocks, uh, which, is, which are of the same size as a huge page. And for each of the page block, it tracks whether it's uh, used for movable allocations that can be migrated, unmovable ones which cannot, and reclaimable also, also cannot be migrated, but at least can be, uh, they belong to slabs that have a shrinker and can at least uh, reclaim itself under memory pressure. And uh, yeah, the page box are marked and the free list for each uh, for each order are also split into these, these three types. So we can give out pages, uh, movable pages to, to user space allocations and so on. And uh, yeah, the allocation is distinguished by one of those GFP flags. So GFP kernel is unmovable, but 
uh, high user movable will be movable as the name says. <coughs> and again, this uh, works nicely until the memory gets full and suddenly uh, you want to do some unmovable allocation, but all the unmovable uh, page blocks are depleted and that's when the fun starts. So in this example, I have a movable page block and some pages are on the movable list. Uh, this, there's an unmovable page block which has the only remaining free page on the unmovable list. And what can happen is, the, as I said, the last allocation fills up the unmovable page block. And uh, we are unlucky, so there's another unmovable allocation and it cannot be satisfied from this. So now the heuristics kick in and uh, try to contain uh, the damage as much as possible. So one thing is that when we are falling back to uh, another migration type, like the movable one here, we first try to find the largest free page so that if we are stealing from another movability type, it's better to steal as much as possible because then if there are more unmovable allocations, they will all go to this page block and we won't pollute more of them. Uh, so we steal everything from this page block and put it on the unmovable free list. And yeah, if, if it was more than half of the uh, pages in this block, uh, we would also change it to unmovable so that it would remain unmovable even in the future. But in this case, it's just three pages out of eight, so that didn't happen. So we started by finding the largest page, but since we allocate just a single page, we in the end give the allocation to this page, so we are not splitting uselessly. Yeah, so can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. So since those are movable pages, at, at this juncture, you might consider um, compressing them. Sorry? Uh, okay. When you need to allocate an unmovable page from the movable block, you yeah. might actually slide the movables together. You might defragment them before giving out a larger error you've created to the unmovable block. Yeah. Uh, you know, sure you'd, 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 create a, you'd create a larger contiguous region of movable pages to guarantee, to guarantee they continue to be contiguous. Yeah, that's uh, one of the possibilities for the future. And uh, yeah, some pages then can be freed in the unmovable page block, so uh, they appear on the unmovable free lists. And that what can happen, there's a movable allocation, and we are unlucky, and it picks this block instead of that block. So uh, now we have multiple page blocks that are mixing. Uh, movable and unmovable pages. And if the allocation is temporarily and immediately freed, the free page, because the page block is still marked as unmovable, the free page becomes also unmovable and even merges with the other movable one because merging uh, doesn't care about uh, the color. Yeah, and in the end, this page would have fit here if we knew the future before and prepared for it, but we could not, so we are fragmented. So yeah, that that's just uh, summarizes the heuristics I've shown in the example. So yeah, we have to be as careful as possible, but we cannot uh, also be too excessively careful, like scanning all of the blocks and finding really the best, best uh, fallback page because that would be prohibitive. 
so open issues of of the uh, of the mechanisms I just introduced. So compaction is often uh, reported to have a large overhead, uh, especially in all the, all the kernels. Uh, on various uh, forums and uh, and you know, documentation for databases, you can find recommendations to disable transparent huge pages because of this high uh, overhead. In fact, the defaults in the kernel have changed that transparent huge pages no longer call compaction when during the page fault uh, of a transparent huge page so that that overhead should be mostly gone by now. But still, uh, we could defer more work to background threads. We have the kcompacd thread since several versions now, which is now uh, satisfying only just one allocation that wo woke it up and creates one pages of the highest order it was called for, and it could be more proactive and uh, uh, create more uh, free pages uh, once it's woken up. In the extreme, it would just try to consolidate all, all pages that have been freed by the, uh, by the case of the reclaim before it woken up kcompacd. Uh, another issue with uh, compaction is that the way it works and the scanners meet somewhere around the middle, it means the other half of the zone is often not scanned at all because uh, the free scanner was scanning it. And uh, then we can end up like here when compaction will uh, always rescan these two page blocks which cannot be helped anymore because they are unmovable pages. And the scanner cannot see these blocks where it could actually migrate stuff away and create uh, huge free pages. So there are several ideas how this can be helped, like not starting always from the beginning and end of the zone, but from the middle that the migration scanner could go from the middle to this direction and the free scanner from the middle to that direction. Or John Sukim proposed at some point that it would both move in the same direction and the space between them would be the free pages. Or uh, my idea uh, is to replace the free scanner uh, completely and just allocate pages from the free lists because it uh, removes lots of free scanner overhead. I can easily see that free scanner has to scan 30 times more than the migration scanner because the free pages are relatively rare. Uh, uh, on a full memory system. But each of these uh, proportions, uh, propositions have some, some dangers of resulting to migrate uh, pages around too much back and forth because there's no, there's, uh, no longer the, the state that that compaction will always converge to, which is this one, uh, because suddenly on you call it and uh, it can migrate that way and uh, call it again, migrate the other way. And also if there are multiple compactions in parallel, that they can like undo each other's work. Like yeah, one, one would be trying to, uh, <coughs> to free this page block and the other one would steal pages, free pages from the same page block. So that would have to be uh, solved because b b before this is uh, possible. Mm. And, and for the mobility grouping, there are also open issues. Uh, like I've said, uh, it has some corner cases because the heuristics cannot be perfect. So, uh, yeah, like in this case, we are again out of 
pages in the unmovable block, and it can happen that the next unmovable allocation will pollute this this movable page block instead of adding to the already polluted uh, page block because because it cannot distinguish these two just from the free lists. And the possible solutions here are again, uh, there are several options that have been tried at some point but not finalized yet. So yeah, like was already said, it's possible to migrate uh, all the remaining pages away from, from the block that we are uh, falling back to uh, by waking up, for example, the kcompactd uh, directly until it now compact this block. Uh, I think the last one who tried that was Mel Gorman last week. And uh, in the end, he he also postponed this it to uh, future work. And uh, another uh, possibility is to be uh, more strict in, uh, in keeping track of which page blocks are polluted. So even if there's a single unmovable page, we would not call the page block as movable, but for example, mixed and uh, prefer it before polluting more unmovable uh, for movable page blocks. And uh, this was even explored in a recent uh, academic paper uh, at ASPLOS this year and it uh, looks like it might help. So that's, uh, but I've also tried this already before and yeah, but I didn't do such a large evaluation, but it's certainly something to try. Or in general, we can strive to have less, fewer fallback events because it means fewer opportunities to mix uh, movable and unmovable pages together. And uh, yeah, in this area, in this direction, Mel Gorman did the series last week that uh, one one big uh, advantage of this is that he defined a new test case because until now we were using a very, uh, very artificial uh, workload that combined um, parallel kernel builds and uh, some artificial allocator of uh, huge pages or pages of whatever size. And Mel now defined a uh, more real workload based on uh, FIO, which is a file system benchmark, and uh, doing THP allocations. And the point is to mix, mix the movable and unmovable allocations so they stress uh, the, uh, the heuristics. And he tried several uh, improvements that seem to uh, result in 95 uh, less uh, percent, less fragmenting events. So that looks very promising. Uh, I will try to review it as soon as possible. Uh, last thing is that even if we are perfect, uh, there are some adverse workloads that will always defeat any heuristic. Uh, because if the the slab caches suddenly grow to almost whole memory and then start sh slowly shrinking. They will keep even, in the end they won't occupy many pages but they will be spread everywhere and uh, we cannot do anything about it right now. And in fact, this is not a theoretical concern because one user is reporting this upstream uh, during the last few months and I have to skip this. Okay, I have five minutes, so yeah, so this is how it looks like when I've processed the reports from that user where he uh, was doing a VM stat snapshot each five seconds 
And uh, we can see that uh, on the freshly booted system, the page cache, which is green, slowly grows as files are being read. The free memory you know, is op becoming occupied. Slab grows a bit, but that's all fine. And then he has some overnight uh, maintenance task, which is like opening or uh, starting all files with find. And that means a lot of metadata activity. So slab grows until 40 gigabytes. Page cache is evicted, of course. And then the maintenance ends and slowly slab is being slowly reclaimed. Uh, but since it's fragmenting memory, suddenly some high order allocations probably are trying to reclaim and compact unsuccessfully, which means they start to reclaim even the page cache, even though it cannot help and the performance is uh, killed. And if he manually drops the slab caches, everything is okay. So we have this very bad scenario and also some very bad reaction to it, which is not yet clear what, uh, uh, why that happens. And I think the only solution to this is in general uh, for, for the anti-fragmentation and compaction is to make more classes of pages movable. As we heard already, VML could be one possibility because we can we can trap whoever accesses via VMA log by page table operations. We could probably make at least some levels of pages migratable. Christopher Lameter was proposing for many years to make slab objects uh, movable, but even him yesterday uh, uh, admitted that it's very hard and <laughs> it hasn't happened in 10 years. Uh, Still, uh, we could try maybe reclaiming slab in the lumpy reclaim way. That would work, but would have probably the same disadvantages. Or we can just try to prevent the slabs growing so much. There's been some effort for negative dentries for that already, but it might uh, help this case, but maybe not in general. So, yeah, the conclusion is that there's still of, uh, lots of work to do. So, thanks. Any questions? <clears throat> you talked about being able to reclaim slab objects and you need to be able to record the pointers. Would it be easier to record a callback? So, for instance, for de-entries, have a callback into the file system to say, I'd like you to free this de-entry, I'd like you to free this de-entry, so that you could try to reclaim slab pages? Yeah, I, I think, yeah, that was the idea behind uh, making them movable. Are there particular slabs that are more often the problem than others? Yeah, it seems to be mostly dentries and inodes because they can be easily filled by file system activity. More questions? If not, so let's thank our speaker. Yeah.